All right, hey, so check this out. So I recently found out something super cool about a country you may not know too much about. Did you know that over the past few years, this tiny Caribbean island has been seeing its gross domestic product or better known as their GDP rise by just over 20%? 20%, that's insane. But here's the even crazier thing. This revenue is not really coming from like, you know, the local tourism or even the fishing industry as you might think, but instead it's actually coming in from the outside. Thanks to something very unusual that many people may not realize, the tech industry. So what exactly is driving this growth? Well, it has a lot to do with something that is literally changing the way we live our lives, but also a part of the internet that's so widely used that you and I take it for granted on a daily basis. In fact, every website in the world needs one of these to work. So how did this tropical paradise become such a surprising player in the global tech industry? Let's get into it. Okay, so this little country is called Anguilla. It's a small island nation in the Caribbean with fewer than 20,000 people. And it's typically best known for its stunning beaches and resorts. But here's the thing. What if I told you that Anguilla's economy has quietly been booming over the past few years because something unique about the region has resulted in a bunch of entrepreneurs and tech startups to start using something this nation is handing out like crazy. Now, congrats to those who actually figured it out, but if you haven't, you're probably very close. What I'm talking about specifically is a two-letter internet domain called .ai, which coincidentally is the acronym for Artificial Intelligence. Okay, so here's the little backstory of how all of this happened. Now, in the early days of the internet, every country was assigned a unique two-letter domain extension called a CCTLD, a country code top-level domain. These domains were meant to represent countries in the digital space like .uk for the United Kingdom, .jp for Japan, or .us for the United States. Now, even today, you'll probably still see some local businesses have websites that use their country domain. Some belong to the government and academia like schools and universities, while others are hyper-local and only providing information to those who care about it, typically living in the same geography. But the question remains, how did these country domains even come about? Well, in the early 1980s, as the internet began to expand beyond its academia and government origins, there was a need to organize domain names systematically. So to address this, the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority, referred to as IANA, adopted a new standard which provided two-letter codes for countries and territories. These codes became the basis for CCTLDs, allowing each nation to have its unique domain extension. The first of these CCTLDs were handed out in the mid-80s. Notably, .us was among the earliest, created shortly after the first general top-level domains, TLDs, like .com and .org. This was then followed by .uk and .il for Israel. Now, what you should also know is that each CCTLD is typically administered by a national registry, which sets policies for domain registration and users within its jurisdiction. So in this particular case, the country of Anguilla was given .ai because, well, you know, those were the two letters taken from its name, I guess. Now for years, it was just another obscure domain, barely used outside the island. And this is where it gets interesting. While most CCTLDs are used by local businesses of the country itself, Anguilla actually began leasing out these .ai domains to companies around the world, especially those in the growing AI industry. In fact, some of the biggest names in tech are now staking their claim on these .ai addresses, becoming one of the hottest domains for tech companies. So basically what you have is that all of this has just turned the island's economy from being primarily like tourism based to a surprising tech driven country. This demand transformed .ai from a forgotten country code into a valuable digital real estate asset, funneling millions of dollars back into Anguilla's economy. Okay, so let's just pause for a second here. So I want to take a brief moment to explain how do domain names like .ai even work? Okay, ready? So at its core, a domain name is just a shortcut, a human-friendly way of accessing a specific location on the internet. When you type something like google.com into your browser, have you ever wondered how the internet knows exactly where to take you? So basically behind the scenes, there's a system quietly working to connect you to the right website. It's called the Domain Name System, or DNS. And trust me, it's actually more interesting than it sounds. Think of DNS as the phone book of the internet. 
Just like you wouldn't want to memorize a friend's phone number, you don't want to remember a long, complicated website number called an IP address, like for example, I know 192.168.1.1 to visit your favorite websites. That would be so exhausting. Instead, DNS translates the easy to remember domain names you type, like youtube.com, into the IP addresses that computers and servers actually use to find each other. It's sort of like the ultimate middleman. Here's how it works. When you type a domain name into your browser and hit enter, your computer sends a request to something called a DNS resolver. It's often managed by your internet service provider or a public service like Google DNS. That resolver is like a detective trying to find out the IP address for the domain you entered. The resolver first checks its cache, just like think of it as it's like onboard fast memory, for example, to see if it already knows the answer. If it doesn't, then the discovery work begins. Step one is to ask a root server, which is the top level directory of the DNS system. Now, the root server doesn't know exactly the IP address, but it points the resolver to the right region, like saying you're looking for .ai domains, right? Ask the .ai server. Now in step two, the resolver goes to the TLD server. Remember the top level domain we initially spoke about, which handles all the domains ending in .ai? Now the TLD server still doesn't know the exact IP address yet, but it directs the resolver to the authoritative name server for that specific domain. Let's say mybusiness.ai, for example. Now in step three, the authoritative name server is like the final boss. It has exactly the IP address of mybusiness.ai. The resolver then takes this information, sends it back to your browser, and then your website loads. Now, if that sounds like a little too complicated, think of DNS like a postal system for the internet. The domain name is like the recipient's name on a letter, the resolver is like a mailman who asks different post offices for directions, and the root server is the central sorting facility, pointing the mailman to the correct country. The TLD server, in this case, is a regional post office, narrowing things down further. And finally, the authoritative name server is the local post office that knows the exact address. Once the address is found, the mail, or in this case, your request, is delivered to the right server, and then you see your website. Now, here's the thing. Every domain is managed by a registry. For .ai, the nation of Anguilla controls the registry, even though most of its users are in the tech world. DNS is one of those systems we rarely think about, but it's absolutely critical to know how the internet works. Without it, searching the web would feel like trying to memorize a phone book. And so for Anguilla, leasing .ai domains has turned into a surprising economic boon for the country. Every domain registration funnels money directly into the island's economy, helping fund public services and infrastructure. In fact, the rise of .ai just shows how something as abstract as a domain extension can have real-world economic impacts, not just for tech giants, but for small nations like Anguilla. Anyway, hope you liked the content and got to learn a little bit about how the internet works. If you enjoyed these little stories, like, subscribe, and comment. It helps make the content like this more accessible and discoverable, and I'll see you next time.